Once you have the midpoint, then you have to calculate the deviations from y. R equals n sigma f dx dy minus sigma f dx into sigma f dy divided by root of n sigma f d square x minus sigma f dx the whole square into root of n sigma f d square y minus sigma f d y the whole square. Okay, here we are having two variables and we have to find the correlation between the age of the students and the marks scored. Hi everyone, I am Purdima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management with the Ashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. I welcome you all to this session. In this session 6 of Unit 3, we will be working one problem on Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. So, up till now we have worked out problems on Carl Pearson's correlation where the data is given. So, here we will be working out the correlation problems where the class intervals are given. So, where two types of class intervals are given, so how do you find the correlation? So, let us see the problem here. The following table gives the frequency according to the marks obtained by 67 students in an intelligence test. Measure the degree of relationship between the age and the marks. So, in this problem, we have to find the correlation between the age of the students and the marks scored by the students. So, totally there are 67 students in the class and we are given the age of the students here. So, in this, the first uh, topmost row, we have the ages of the students. So, 18, 19, 20 and 21. So, these are the ages of the students. Then, in this column wise, we are having the marks of the students. What is the mark scored? Or how many students have scored the marks here? So, the test marks between 200 to 250, 4 students have scored. And out in the age bracket of 19, again 4 students have scored. If within 20, we have 2 students and 21, 1 student. So, the total frequency is 11. Then, between 250 to 300, there are 3 students who have scored 5, 4 and 2. Again, 300 to 350. So, 2 students of the age bracket of 18. Then, 6 students with 19 years. And the 20 years, we have 8 students who have scored. And 21 years students, they have scored. 5 of them have scored between 300 to 350. Next, 350 to 400, only one student from 18 years, four students who, who are aged between 19 and six students who are aged 20 and 10 students aged 21. So, here we have the two frequencies here. So, the row wise frequency totals are here that is 11, 14, 21 and 21 and the column wise frequency is written here. So, 10, 19, 20 and 18. So, here we are having two variables and we have to find the correlation between the age of the students and the marks scored. So, let the age of students and marks obtained by them be represented by the variables x and y. So, we take the age of students as x and test marks as y. So, we are considering the age as x and the test marks as y respectively. So, calculation for this bivariate data is shown below. So, in the next slide, we will be showing the calculations for the bivariate data. So, in the first row, I have written the age in years. So, that will be the x values. Then, the y values will be the marks scored by the students. So, the class interval 200 to 250, 250 to 300, 300 to 350, 350 to 400. So, this will be the marks. Now, the next column, the next row will be dx. So, that is deviation from x. So, I have written, I have taken the assumed mean as 19. So, 18 minus 19 will be minus 1. Then, 19 minus 19 is 0, 20 minus 19 is 1, 21 minus 19 is 2. Now, in this we can see here the y values here. So, the midpoint will be 225, 
375, 375, 375. So once you have the midpoint, then you have to calculate the deviations from y. So I have the assumed mean as 275 minus 225. So that will be 50 divided by 50 that is 1. So minus 1. Then next one will be 0 plus 1 and 2. Now I have written all the frequencies as it is here. So whatever is the frequency 4421, 3542, 2685, so, the frequencies I have written as it is. Now, the total frequency also will be the same. So, 11, 14, 21, 21, total is 67. So, here also 10, 19, 20, 18, the total is 67. Now, after this total of uh, F column, I have this FDY column. So, FDY means frequency into DY. So, this total of F, into dy column. So, what is the number here? 11. 11 into minus 1. That will be minus 11. Now, f d square y will be minus 1 into minus 1 equals plus 1. 1 into 11 equals 11. So, I got the 11 here. So, this is minus 1 the whole square into 11. That is 11 here. Now, Next one will be 14. So, 14 into dy. 14 into 0 is 0. So, here also it is 0. 14 square. So, 0 square is 0. It is 0. Now, the next one will be 1 into 21. 1 into 21 equals 21. Then, 1 square into 21 is 21. Next one is 21 into 2. So, 2 into 21, it was 42. Then 2 square. So, 2 square is 4 into 21 is 84. Okay. So, we are done with F D Y and F D square Y. So, whatever are the values you add, you get 52 here. Here you get 116. Now, here again we have the F values and we have the dx. So, F dx that will be minus 10 into minus 1. So, this will be 10 into minus 1 minus 10. So, 10 into minus 1 is minus 10. Then, 0 so, 19 into 0. So, we have, we are multiplying this column into this one. So, 19 into 0 is 0. 20 into 1 is 20. 18 into 2 equals 36. So, this is 18 into 2. So, this is 20 into 1. This is 19 into 0. This is 10 into minus 1. So, in this way we have to multiply. Now, for the next row, we have to square this dx values. So, 1 square minus 1 into minus 1 is plus 1. 1 into 10 is 10. Anything into 0 is 0. 1 square is again 1. So, I get 20. Now, this one is 2 to the 4, 18 into 4 equals 72. Now, the next one will be, we have to calculate the numbers in these circles here. So, how do we calculate f dx into dy? So, the individual frequency 4 into minus 1 into minus 1. So, 4 into minus 1 into minus 1. So, that is 4. Then next one f into dy into dx 4 into minus 1 into 0. So anything into 0 is 0. So the entire column it is 0, 0, 0, 0. Now here if you take next one will be 2 into 
वन इंटू माइनस वन टू इंटू वन इज टू टू इंटू माइनस वन इज माइनस टू इट इज रिटर्न हियर देन वन इंटू टू इंटू माइनस वन सो वन इंटू टू इंटू माइनस वन दट इज माइनस टू नेक्स्ट वन विल बी थ्री इंटू जीरो इंटू माइनस वन थ्री इंटू जीरो इंटू माइनस वन एनीथिंग इंटू जीरो इज जीरो सो इट इज जीरो द नेक्स्ट वन विल बी फाइव इंटू जीरो इंटू जीरो फाइव इंटू जीरो इंटू जीरो इट इज जीरो फोर इंटू जीरो इंटू वन फोर इंटू जीरो इंटू वन इट इज जीरो देन टू इंटू जीरो इंटू टू टू इंटू जीरो इंटू टू That is again zero. It's written here zero. Now two into minus one into one. That is minus two. Six into one into zero. Six into one into zero. Zero. Eight into one into one. Eight. Then five into two into one. That is ten. Then next one will be. वन इंटू टू इंटू माइनस वन माइनस टू फोर इंटू टू इंटू जीरो जीरो सिक्स इंटू वन इंटू टू सिक्स इंटू वन इंटू टू दट इज ट्वेल्व नेक्स्ट वन विल बी टेन इंटू टू इंटू टू दट इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी नेक्स्ट सो वी हैव दीज नंबर्स इन द सर्कल्स नाउ we for this f dx dy row we have to add all the values in the circles so 4 plus 0 minus 2 minus 2 so plus 4 minus 4 i am getting 0 then the entire row becomes 0 here now this 8 plus 12 is 20 minus 2 equals 18 then 50 minus 2 is 48 now the next column will be add all these values here so minus 10 plus 20 will be plus 10 plus 10 plus 36 will be 46 then 10 plus 20 30 30 plus 72 is 102 then 18 plus 48 is 66 so we got the f dx dy column now here again we have to add the numbers only in the circle 4 plus 0 minus 2 minus 2 it becomes 0 then again 0 then 8 plus 2 10 10 minus 2 is 16 i get 16 then next one 52 minus 2 equals 50 now The next step will be add all these values. Sixteen plus fifty, it is sixty-six. So here also it is sixty-six. So both these sigma f dx dy they should match. So they should you should get the same number when you add these two values. So here also I am getting sixty-six. Here also I am getting sixty-six. So the problem is correct. Now. I have to substitute these values in the formula here. Substituting the values in the formula of Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation, so we have the formula here: R equals n sigma f dx dy minus sigma f dx into sigma f dy divided by root of n sigma f d square x minus sigma f dx the whole square. Into root of n sigma f d square y minus sigma f d y the whole square. So this is the formula. Now in this formula we have to substitute the values. So what is the value of n here? The number of students is n equals number of students. So number of students is given as sixty seven. So this is the sixty seven I have written. Now. Here I have the total of sigma f dx dy. F dx dy is given as sixty six, so I am writing it here as sixty six. So n denotes this sixty seven denotes the n values. 
then sigma f dx into sigma f dy. Now what is sigma f dx? Sigma f dx is 46, sigma f dy is 52. So this will be equal to 46 into 52 whole over root of what is n here? 67 into fd square x. fd square x is 102 and d square y is 116. So, I write 67 into 102 minus 46 the whole square. Again, root of, so you can see here, n sigma f, n is equal to 67. Sigma fd square is 116 fdy the whole square is 52 the whole square. Now when I simplify this 67 into 66 I get 4422 minus 2392 divided by 67 into 102 is 6834 minus 2106. So into root of 67 into 116 is 772 minus 2704. So this will be equal to 2030 divided by 4718 into root of 5068. So this will be 2030. So root of 4718 is 68.688. The root of 5068 is 71.19. So when I simplify this, I get the answer as 0 0.415. So the correlation between the age and the mark score is 0.415. So we have to interpret the result now. So just finding out the values will not be of no help until and unless you know the interpretation part. Since the value of R is positive, therefore age of the students and marks obtained in intelligence test are positively correlated to the extent of 0.415. Both are positively correlated. Hence, we conclude that as the age of the student increases, the score of marks in intelligence test also increases. So, since there is a positive correlation between the age and the mark score, we should assume or we interpret that the, as the age increases, the intelligence also increases. With this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.